Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my uh, reading wrap-up for January 2023. Dane reads. I have a few books to tell you about. The first of which is this one. This is Frank Herbert's Dune, the graphic novel book one by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson with illustrations by Raoul Allen and Patricia Martin. I also have um, book two here as well, book two, Mwadib. Uh, both of these got a four out of five. And they basically, they take the original Dune novel and they break it into three, which was how it was originally envisaged and just tell the story in graphic novel format. It's very lovingly done. The illustrations are beautiful as well and like very detailed, even down to the, you know, um, what's his name, Dr. Suck has got his uh, diamond tattoo on his head and things like that. But it's just a really interesting way of reading the Dune series that really brought it to life as well. I have, as you can see, tabbed out book one. I didn't tab book two, but I will be doing a review of book number one. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of the Dune books or graphic novels, definitely check it out. I think you could enjoy the Dune series through the graphic novels, you know, book one, uh, through the graphic novels without missing out too much. Um, and I'm saying that as a Dune fan, you know? And then I read Jack Pumpkinhead of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is book number 23 in the Wizard of Oz series. I will admit, by this point, it's just starting to feel super derivative uh, of itself. I even had to look up on Goodreads whether I'd already read this one because I wasn't sure. Um, it was okay, I suppose. There was some really good wordplay in there. Bit of a weird obsession with beards going down. By this point, I, I wrote in my review of it that Ruth Plumley Thompson has, has resorted to imitating herself, but that's kind of in the Oz tradition because that's what L. Frank Baum did as well. But we now have this weird situation where she's right, trying to like write like L. Frank Baum, and L. Frank Baum was also trying to write like L. Frank Baum. So it's kind of copied itself so much by the, the by this point that it's. It, it kind of loses itself really, but I'm determined to keep going on with this series, so I am going to keep going. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Hello everybody, I've just got one book to wrap up for you today, that is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, adapted for the stage by Alan Bennett. So this is a stage play of The Wind in the Willows, written by Alan Bennett. Uh, he's kind of one of my favourite writers, I'm currently working my way through the last of all of the books that he's ever written, hence me picking this one up. And um, it's really good, I've, not, I've never read The Wind in the Willows before, so my only real kind of exposure to it I suppose is from this play. As usual as well uh, the uh, introduction to it is fantastic. Uh, Bennett writes really fascinating introductions and that's certainly the case here so do read the introduction if you happen to pick this up. Um, but yes really enjoyed uh, The Wind in the Willows. Four out of five. Uh, full review coming soon. Alright guys just the one book to wrap up for you and that is Bonjour Tristesse by Françoise Sagan. Uh, this book was interesting it was very beautifully written I, I would actually quite like to read it in French. Um, she was only 18 when she wrote it and uh, I mean it was just as I say beautifully written again I don't know how much I can credit her with that and how much that comes down to the translator. Um, it was also very much in the kind of stoner by John Williams vein of things where it told us quite an, an ordinary life um, it's very much grounded in reality as opposed to you know the June books I've been reading where they're off in space and all of that stuff um, but yeah very beautifully written as I say um, only about 110 pages I picked it up going cheap in uh, the book exchange at my local Morrison's and I can see why it's one of those books that everyone points to and says you should read this one again especially with the length you'd be crazy not to I gave it a strong four out of five Full review coming soon. All right, guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you today. The camera's moving again. It does this by itself. It's weird. Look, no hands. Uh, this is The Madness of George III by Alan Bennett. So this is a play based on the life of George III, who I know nothing about other than what's in this play. Stop moving. People are going to get seasick. And, um, yeah, it was an interesting one. I'm not really a royalist, so I don't really care for the royal family either of the past or the present day one. Um, so the subject matter wasn't particularly interesting to me. I also normally find that Bennett's introductions are, like, exceptional. And in this case, it, it was quite boring. It's like the most boring introduction I've ever read to a Bennett play. So actually, even though I wasn't expecting it because of the subject matter, I enjoyed the, the play more than the introduction, which doesn't often happen. Um, I mean, obviously the plays are generally good, but normally the introductions are just fire, as the kids would say. Um, but yes, overall, The Madness of George III by Alan Bennett, I gave it a 3 out of 5, it was okay. It's got a little sticky bit on the front here that I'm trying and failing to unpick. But yes, that's what I made of it. Hello, it's me. Just the one book to wrap up for you today. It's Smut by Alan Bennett. So this contains two stories, which are The Greening of... 
The greening of Mrs. Donaldson and the shielding of Mrs. Forbes. Both cracking stories. I particularly like the greening of Mrs. Donaldson. Basically, that revolves around uh, like a middle-aged woman whose husband has died, and um, she starts going to like participate as like a model for um, people who are studying medicine. But yeah, very funny. A little bit smutty, but not too smutty. Like not Fifty Shades of Grey style. And again, it's Alan Bennett, but it's Alan Bennett at his best with two cracking novellas. I couldn't find any fault with either of these stories, so I gave Smut by Alan Bennett a strong, well, of course, five out of five. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The Writer in Disguise by Alan Bennett. This has a bunch of TV plays brought together. It's funny because Bennett actually says there's no such thing as a good script. It all comes down to the interpretation. But I would say these were pretty good scripts. Uh, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think it's Bennett's best. I mean, I just read this after reading Smut, and Smut was fantastic. Um, but the stories in this are pretty good, and I also really enjoyed it. It comes with, um, like, an introductory essay and some journal excerpts that cover the production of them as well, so that made it quite interesting. Um, and yes, I should tell you what it contains. It contains uh, me, I'm afraid of Virginia Woolf, all day on the sands, one fine day, the old crowd and afternoon off. So yes, recommended. All right, just the one book to wrap up for you today, guys. That is The Complete Beyond the Fringe by Alan Bennett, Peter Cook, Jonathan Miller, and Dudley Moore. So as you can kind of guess from the title of this, this brings together all of the scripts of Beyond the Fringe, uh, the original show that these guys are in. It was in the early 60s. It was kind of groundbreaking for its time, from what I understand. And it's funny to me that this is the last kind of Bennett book that I've read, because I've read all of the other Bennett that I know of, apart from maybe one book that I learned about from uh, Graeme Sillers here on YouTube. Um, and this was like the first thing he did. This was what catapulted all of these guys into superstardom, really. And I can see why it's very funny. It reminds me of uh, The Goon Show uh, by Spike, Spike Milligan and those lot. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in comedy, satire, all that kind of stuff, check it out. Also, it's got loads of like... Just like, this is literally uh, sheet music for a piano part that Dudley Moore played. Um, some of these piano songs do have lyrics. That one in particular was just an instrumental. So there you go. All right, just the one book to wrap up for you guys today, and that is Twas the, right, Twas the Fright Before Christmas in Deathly Hem, an anthology of holiday horrors for charity, edited by Michael J. Evans and Harrison Graves. This has got a bunch of awesome stories in it. Uh, it has Black Solstice by myself. All proceeds of this go to the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. And yes, so we have The Fine Print by Janet Alcorn, Black Solstice by myself, The Chimney by R.A. Clark, Convicted by Mike Marcus, Last Supper by Liam Hogan, Part and Parcel by Nathan D. Ludwig, Pond person by Even Bothman, Not a Creature Was Stirring by DJ Kozlowski, Silent Scream by C.L. Hart, Christmas in Four Parts by Lisa H. Owens, End of the Line by James Jenkins, The Yule Lads Are Coming by Vill Villamy Mist, Spirit of the Season by Paul O'Neill, A Christmas Stuff Story by Dino Parenti, Little Helpers by Matt Starr, That Christmas Feeling by D.S. O'Leary, and Mad Shadow by Bam Barrow. And yes, I really did enjoy it. I mean, obviously I read this like mid uh, mid-January so it's not really the ideal time for reading it but yeah if you get a chance to pick this up ready for next Christmas I definitely recommend it it's all good for a good cause lots of great Christmas themed horror what's not to love all right guys just the one book to wrap up for you today and that's Haunted Yuletide edited by Jane Julia Barnson I read this hot on the heels of towards the fright before Christmas in Deathly Hem and they both do a very similar thing um, essentially indie horror anthology. This one leans a little bit less on the horror and goes to less of an extreme, but it certainly does have some of it. Um, and there's a really interesting introductory note where it talks about, you know, having Halloween at Christmas and how Dickens' Christmas Carol is basically a ghost story and all of that stuff. So some really good stuff. Um, it's got stories in it by Misha Burnett, David J. West, Lauren Stokeld, Amy Beattie, Sarah E. Steely, Robin Cranny, Alan Evans, Stacey Olson, Donnelly Weaver, John M. Olson, James T. Lambert, Iram Beck, Jodie Lynn Chase, Scott William Taylor, and Mark Munson. Overall, it wasn't quite as good as uh, Twas the Fright Before Christmas in Deathly Hem, but the two of them do very much have similarities. I think really the only reason this fell down was because a uh, uh, Fright Before Christmas or whatever, that was uh, in aid of charity, and it was also longer, it had more stories in it. So that's really where it stands up. But the quality is very similar, just good quality indie horror. So I gave A Haunted Yuletide, no no A, just Haunted Yuletide by Jay, Lee, Jay and Julie Barnson. Uh, a week four out of five, but still a four. All right, guys, just one book to wrap up for you today, and that is The Journey to the East by Herman Hess. So um, this is kind of a metaphysical novel, I guess. It's very head fucky. I still don't really know if I understood it totally. Um, it also has like weird characters in it, so it's got both real and fictitious characters. It says here Plato, Pythagoras, Don Quixote, Tristram Shandy, Baudelaire, and Leo. Um, 
And yeah, for me, the bit that made it most interesting was that it has a uh, introduction by Timothy Leary, which actually took up probably about a fifth of the book. It's very short. I don't know. I wouldn't call it a novel. It's a novella, or at least it's novella length, really. Um, and yeah, it was good. It was very beautifully read. I still don't know what the hell happened in it. But hey ho, I did read it, I did enjoy it, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Hello everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you and that is Consider Her Ways and Others by John Wyndham. This is a short story collection by John Wyndham. Oh, I'm, there we go, my radio show is going off. Uh, this is a short story collection by John Wyndham who wrote The Day of the Triffids and various other, you know, awesome novels. I mean, what does it say here? Crack and Wakes, Chrysalid, Seeds of Time, Midwich Cuckoos, Trouble with Lich and The Outward Urge. I've read most of those by this point. Uh, as I say, this is a short story collection. It actually con consists of the uh, title story, Consider Her Ways, is more of a novella. Um, and it's got like feminist themes to it. It's kind of set in a future in which men don't exist anymore. Um, and somebody wakes up with amnesia and is like, what the fuck's going on? Um, it worked pretty well. I've said in uh, my review of Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir that the amnesia element doesn't always work for me, but it worked well there and it worked well here as well. Um, overall, some pretty good stories. I would give it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was good. It wasn't great. I think if you're new to Wyndham, read some of his more well-known stuff before getting to this, but if you're a completionist, it's definitely worth checking out. Alrighty guys, a few books to wrap up for you. I'll start with The Crack and Wakes by John Wyndham. This has lost the front cover, so that can now go in the bin. You will see that I've tabbed it out. I'm not going to shoot a review, because it turns out I have actually already read it, so I didn't realise until posting my review, but I read it in 2020, so I guess it left a big impression on me. Actually, this time, I really did enjoy it. I gave it a strong 4 out of 5. I would say it's one of Wyndham's best. And I just thought it was really well thought out. Like, I like the way that, for example, we have these unknown things in the deep. And so that causes, like, uh, shipping shares to drop and aerospace shares to rocket and things like that. He's just really good at writing this kind of, you know, hard sci-fi kind of horror elements to, uh, novels that are really well thought out and really reflect what would actually happen. Um, I also like the fact that you never actually really see the enemy, so it's just this kind of unseen evil presence lurking beneath the waves. Then I read The Accident on the A35 by Graham McRae Burnett, so this is the second, what is it, George, George Gorski, uh, George Gorski rather, book. Um, and this is framed with a really interesting device. Burnett, like, sets himself up to be the translator of this fictitious uh, dead writer, and this is like that dead writer's second book. Really beautifully written. It's kind of similar to The Disappearance of Adele Bado. It's uh, like literary fiction, mystery, crime, all rolled into one. And as I say, just super beautifully written. I'm a big Graham McRae Burnett fan. I gave this a strong four out of five. And then I read Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, AKA JK Rowling. So I read this via audiobook. As you can see, it's a bit of an old chunker. I guess it was okay. Um, the first, like, I don't know, probably like 50 to 60 pages um, were just about the wedding because Robin gets married. Um, but the problem is, is I don't like Robin or Strike or Robin's husband, like any of these big main characters. None of them interest me. I just find them all to be unlikable. Um, so kind of being at their wedding when I don't like weddings as well it was just kind of tedious and there's this whole like will they won't they thing and I'm like I don't care these are all terrible people um, and then it took ages to get into the actual crime element as well like there is a decent story in this it's just that maybe half of it is decent story and the other half I personally think should have been edited out um, and I'm not really sure why it wasn't my only idea is that the um, her editor was too intimidated by it being J.K. Rowling to, you know, say, you should cut off all of this crap. Anyway, it was just okay. I gave it like a 3 out of 5. I do have Trouble Blood up there, which is the next one. I'm not particularly keen to get to it, but I will keep on going with this series anyway, because why the hell not? Um, you get them in charity shops all the time, so it's an easy enough one to read, you know? I also read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. So Ruth Ware is a thriller writer. I've read some of her stuff before and found it to be hit and miss. This one was definitely a hit. I think it's her best one so far. Basically, somebody applies for a job as kind of like a live-in nanny slash au pair. Um, and strange things are happening at the house that she's gone to. It also has some really good stuff on like technology because the, the house is owned by these architects and they really believe in like connected devices and cameras and all of this stuff and like Google Homes and all of that. So I thought that was quite cool. I gave that a four out of five. This was also a four out of five. This is I Follow You by Peter James. 
another kind of thriller. This is one of his standalones as opposed to part of his Roy Grace series. It's kind of like his older work before the Roy Grace stuff, um, but with his modern writing abilities. So it all came together really well, I thought. Again, strong four out of five review coming soon. One of the better thrillers I've read recently. And then we have uh, Damien by Herman Hesse. And this is again, it's kind of a bit like The Journey to the East. It is. It does have a little bit more of a narrative driven plot, I suppose. Um, it reminded me of like Stoner by John Williams. A lot of Herman Hesse's stuff does that in that it follows quite an ordinary character. Um, and we get a lot of, lot of kind of like philosophy along the way and stuff. Um, re again, really beautifully written, really interesting stuff. The first, open, the first like maybe, I don't know if it's in, was it in chapters? Kind of in chapters. And the opening few scenes, anyway, really gripped me and, and got me interested in it because it's kind of tackles like childhood guilt and hiding stuff from your parents and whether once you start lying, can you ever stop and all of that stuff. Really cool stuff, four out of five. Hello everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Jizzle by John Wyndham. This is a short story collection. The title story in, in this collection, Jizzle, is about a monkey who can draw pictures and it gets used for like an attraction at a circus, but then it manipulates people. Uh, so I'm actually some really good stories in this. John Wyndham, he's an ideas man, you know, so his short stories are pretty good at being like a, a testing ground for his ideas. Um, Sometimes his novels can be kind of convoluted, so you almost get the opposite with his short stories where you want a little bit more from, from them, but there are some really great ideas, as I say, some good writing, overall cracking little collection, 3.5 out of 5. Alright everybody, so those are all the books that I read in the month of January 2023. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.